Very good morning, Mr. Phil Boyle, Mr. G. M. Rao, Sri Anangovan, Dr. Tamil Mani, distinguished participants, academicians, industry partners, my dear students, members of media, ladies and gentlemen. You have given me an opportunity to address uh, almost the house full of uh, who and who of aeronautics of this country. So obviously I would like to make use of this opportunity because rarely you get this kind of a gathering where you can really bring out what we need to do as a country. Six years, six decades of aviation, aeronautics in this country and with Bangalore as the hub both in terms of academic uh, excellence, manufacturing, design and development, and uh, participation at the international platforms. So this city has the unique distinction of bringing aeronautics to the forefront of technologies in this country. While uh, the beginnings were very simple and small, Pre-independence, of course, we had uh, some semblance of HL in those days, which grew up today's HL. We had our Indian Institute of Science with its nucleus of aeronautics. Today, we have a large population of engineering colleges giving education in, in, in aeronautics and a large number of industry partners who are doing tremendous development activity. Similarly, in the area of uh, aviation, I would say the professional or the, or the management of the aviation, there has been tremendous breakthrough over the last 10 to 15 years with uh, new airports which have come up and uh, two agencies, particularly Mr. GMR who is present here today, has been a pioneer in establishing the world-class facilities today which has brought uh, unique distinction to our country in this area. But we have to look from that particular uh, status what we have achieved today to what we are going to be in the years to come. And that is through technologies. The technologies which are very, very important. And uh, while we grew in technology from the small aircraft like uh, HF-24, the first one which came up, to today's LCA and large number of missiles starting from early days of SS-11B to Prithvi to today's Agnes and now BO-5 and today's UAVs starting from our Lakshya to Nishant and now the Rustams. There has been a good journey and the strong technology base but the, similarly we have grown in manufacturing. HAL today boasts of having more than 10 divisions and private partners coming in a big way. So this exceptional growth certainly should lead to a large number of products which can go into our armed forces. But unfortunately, we have only LCA which is just entering. We have some of the UAVs which are just going in and we have uh, some of the missiles which have already gone into the armed forces. That is the level of self-reliance which is getting into different domains in different disciplines Particularly, if you see missiles today, we are inching close to 80%. If you take aeronautics, we are probably 60 to 65%, and UAVs and so on. But uh, technologically, still there is a dependence which is widely in certain areas. And what are those areas? I thought this seminar should dwell upon those areas and make efforts to make sure that through various means of strategizing our technology development, we should be able to carry forward this unique job of building technologies for aeronautics and aerospace. Now what we are looking at, if you look at today's aeronautics program with the LCA, which is entering into production with its own requirements of augmenting the production rate, ensuring quality, ensuring the timely delivery to the user, which requires augmentation of our manufacturing capabilities, augmentation of our facilities in terms of critical technologies, particularly in the areas of composites, composite manufacturing, and also going into a domain where you can accelerate the process of manufacturing by automation, semi-automation, and so on. So that is one, 
one line we have to take uh, the technology of manufacturing now technology of manufacturing is not purely for lca i think we ought to uh, ought to have the future uh, aircraft which are on the drawing board namely the advanced medium combat aircraft and uh, the unmanned uh, carrier systems and so on which will certainly require a next generation of technologies i have a saying always that while we are today talking of manufacturing fourth plus generation lca we need to go for manufacturing technologies also commensurate and and in line with what is needed and obviously the manufacturing agencies in this country will have to go in for the latest versions of technologies for example one is now changing over from all composite airframes and composite also what kind of manufacturing processes you know what the type of problems we face while we are manufacturing our wings for the lca obviously a large amount of tooling automation and uh, different uh, manufacturing processes for composites have to be built there welded structures are going in so we have to go for high speed machining facilities net uh, we have to go for near net forging we have to go for jigless uh, assembly and laser based inspection so many of these technologies will have to be uh, brought in if we have to match the requirements of the fifth generation fighter aircraft which is also during uh, in the collaborative arrangement for manufacturing and development and our own amca so this has to go this so this is one as far as the manufacturing is concerned but there are there are going to be requirement for these kind of aircraft for the materials also while we keep importing many of the things and many materials we import our own midani does give you some materials but still there is a wide gap and the future materials would be certainly more and more dependent on composites and there when we go for functionally graded composites and things like that will have to be built and for the engine manufacturing if we have to go for engines then we have to go for special alloys and special alloys will also lead special manufacturing processes like for example the next generation of engine if we have to make we are all looking at single crystal blade technology we are all looking at uh, blisk we are all looking at integration of all of them into a format so that you get a compact system i'm not talking of the new generation of the engines i'm only talking of new technologies which will make the engines efficient with the today's cycles but if you start looking at variable delivery cycles then you have to start looking at the growth of that particular area also and uh, that would be our requirement i am not touching on what we everybody is talking today of green aviation green aviation means we have to go for new fuels and we have to start looking at how to suppress the suppress the signatures one of the major requirement going to be in the advanced medium combat aircraft is going to be the requirement of uh, uh, i would say special materials because that's going to be a stealth aircraft so we have to go for uh, stealth radar absorbing materials radar absorbing structures and radar absorbing paints in addition to the aerodynamics which is going to be commensurate with the reduced signatures and how to reduce the ir signatures that also has to be built in right from the design stage so when you go for stealth again because everything is going to be hidden serpentine intakes flow cavities and integrated modular architecture for advanced avionics systems and all covered weaponry which is going to be kept in sight and the new technology which is emerging today is optical interconnect that means we need to put all the systems through the optical inter interconnect and all conformal antennas for the avionics and possibly the system on chip for the complete computation and the mission management obviously that would require neural network based control systems and today what we are doing as a pure linear control systems everybody will be talking of non linear control systems which will be augmented along with that unsteady aerodynamics and if we have augment or aerodynamics for the uavs then we will go for smaller uavs means low reynolds number aerodynamics and for the higher class of uavs then we go for lifting wing designs so obviously we are looking at new era of technologies which will be required to be developed if we have to cover the complete spectrum of uavs aircrafts i am not touching the missiles right now because uh, <coughs> that would uh, take us much longer in terms of design capability i think we have to change our method of designs also 
one thing which is emerging is the model based model based design and that model based design would require that we have to have special tools for doing that and those tools have to be done and finally high fidelity simulation systems requiring very very robust with virtual reality hardware and loop simulation facilities and also a virtual reality for the man machine interface for the pilots and the pilot vehicle interface which is required to be built along with that i suppose our uh, seminar will throw a lot of light on these technologies which are going to make our country strong and then we can leapfrog from where we are today into a separate domain i can only mention to this gathering that challenges are many today if you look at aeronautics programs in this country you have more than about 80000 crores worth of program i am not talking of direct acquisition programs which are coming i am not talking of mmrc which will be integrated i am talking of development programs which will take uavs which will take ucav which will take amca and many of the other uh, <coughs> systems which we need to build for a country like that obviously one hcl or one ad or one ada will not be adequate we need to augment ourselves and that is where the participation of uh, indian industry and indian academics and my student community which is present here have to take up all these challenges a good synergy among these three have to exist we have been talking about industry participation in the aeronautics unfortunately uh, we are not graduating from discussion stage to actual implementation of the strategies for private industry participation in the aeronautics i have uh, come to know that many industries i would not like to name them but are willing to make investment but last four years i have been only listening and i am seeing that yes somebody is going to set up a, a, a assembly hangar in hyderabad somebody is trying to do it in pune somebody is trying to do it in bangalore but ultimately if you look at it i have to still go to hcl i have to still go to small time manufacturers in the country to get components so nobody is graduating from a component manufacturer to a subsystem developer or a system manufacturer i think we are all getting into the egg and the chicken story we have to break this uh, syndrome and somebody has to take these initiatives now how do we solve it we have always come out with this proposal that we in drdo are willing to work with any industry who is ready to work on a participation basis if you are ready to work on a participation basis drdo would be willing to uh, get the rustam thing done by the industry and as a result the participation will be on a equitable basis and the industry can grow such models will have to be worked out and these models if they are worked out then the industry participation in the aeronautics will grow i wish that uh, this platform gives us more strategies more ideas to improve the technology to improve the manufacturing base and also give challenges to our student community to our academicians to upgrade the level of technology in this country i am with you the idea is with all of you and we would like to share your efforts in making this country strong and self-reliant in aeronautics thank you very much god bless you